Brak fi hawo, brak fi hawo sha, brak fi hawo, brak fi hawo sha, brak fi hawo. Brak fi hawo ba shim ya sha ba shim ka ku dash. A double honest to the apostles and the elders of great millstone to well. I want to say salutations to the whole for the elect out there, man. You are to the document that do this thing in the utmost truth and sincerity. I'm going to preach your mind in this week's topic. I'm going to begin into uh, sort of, you know, the feminization of the black man or the Israelite man, all right? Kind of a response to Elder Manatazak. And truth be told, the Spirit was on me to do something similar because I was watching the lesson of this guy speaking on that, all right? How um, you see the role, was, the role reversal, the role inversion of the feminine and the masculine, man. Pretty much, uh, you know, you got our people, many of the men of our people are pretty much effeminized. Now, you look at a Jake uh, now, so-called Negro, Latino, or Native American now, you know, they got their pants off their ass. They're very emotional as compared to the 70s, where men were a bit more rough, upright, and uh, logical. Now, things are being ruled by emotions, thanks to Esau's propaganda and influence in the masses of the people, man. All right. Without further ado, this is the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. It says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven? So you can't be wicked and get into the kingdom of heaven. Unless you, if you, you have to repent, all right? Because we, we were all wicked at one point. We were all doing things of the world, committing adultery, primarily eating all types of madness, and uh, so-called calling ourselves Christians, man. All right, we had the Bible in our hands, but we wasn't doing our best to try to practice what it says. So you got to repent of those things, all right? If you want to inherit the kingdom of heaven, if you want to be the first fruits that's delivered up on them ships um, when America is being destroyed, man, all right? It says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of the Most High? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, all right? That's talking about adultery, both spiritual and physical. Uh, no idolaters, all right? So bound down to another... Um, Lord, if you will, all right, whether it be quote unquote Jesus, all right, which is a white image, whitewashed image of our Lord and Savior. Uh, our people are into all types of bullshit. If you're not following Yahweh Shai, Yahweh or Yahweh Shai, all right, and that's the Lord's name in the Hebrew tongue, then there's no hope for your ass, all right, because the scripture says there's no other name when men shall be saved, man. It says, Be not deceived, neither fornicator, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, all right, nor effeminate. All right, there you go. There you go that key word. You can't be a feminine person, man, which means to completely lack all types of faith because that's what women normally lack. All right, women, no, women normally lack faith. They normally lack belief, man. All right. They, 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 they think differently. You know, I'll give a prime example. All right. Um, I say, say I'm working out, right? I'm working out. I might put that as my WhatsApp status. That's what I did for the day. You know, my pops might say, hey, good job, son. Keep going. But my mom might say, Hey, be careful, you're going to kill yourself, you know? So you see the difference in the faith, man, all right? Which is that balance, of course, all right? But there's nothing wrong with the way a man thinks and the way a woman thinks, man, all right? See, what they're trying to do is um, this whole feminist movement is not about really making women equal to men as more as to have women usurp authority over men, all right? And you can see that with certain movies such as Captain Marvel, One Woman, Bad Girl, all these types of things. They're taking a typical male role and not making them equal, but doing what they do and usurping their position, man. All right, so right there, that's creating conflict and confusion. When the most I created men and women to live together, not to be against each other. All right, <clears throat> for prime example, you know that Batgirl trailer. I think she was like, um, there was like the Batman suit is perfect, and she said it's not gonna be perfect till it can fit a woman. Right now, let's say um, a man was to say that. Right, if a man said, look. Um, you know, this suit's not going to be perfect till it fits a man. There'll be all types of uproars, man. So you see that there's there's not truly a qu equality that they're trying to establish, man. All right? And I want to get this aside, man. The most side did not create man and woman to be equal. All right? Because if you look at the physical characteristics of a man, all right, it's superior to that of a female. The fastest man is more faster than the fastest woman. All right? This is order. Okay? This is the way that the most side made it. It says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit shall know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of the most high be not deceived neither fornicators nor idolaters nor adulterers nor effeminate nor abusers of themselves of mankind that's going into these homosexuals man all right you can't be a lesbian homosexual bisexual transsexual all this type of shit man look the scripture says male and female created he them man all right you can't build nothing with a bunch of screws you can't build nothing with just only 
uh, nuts, all right? I'm talking about like a lug nut. You need the, you need the nuts and the bolts, okay? Because if you used to put, um, let's say, a homosexual, all these homosexuals and put them on islands, nature will kill them, kill them off because they would only want to sleep and produce what well, they can produce. That's the point right there, all right? Sex is supposed to bring forth life, and they don't do that. Right, as the most I said, that's an abominable act, and you're not supposed to be surrounding yourself by that, you're not supposed to touch that, you're not supposed to be around that because guess what? Everybody gives a certain vibration off. And as you can see, the majority of the population now have become feminized, all right, highly into homosexuality, where it's like a cool thing. Um, like you know, if you're not if you're not um um homosexual tolerant, then you're a homophobe, which that means afraid of homosexuals, which we're not afraid of no homosexuals, man. The scriptures tell you they should be put to death. The only reason we're not putting them to death is because that's this is not our time and place to do that. You you do some shit like that, you get your ass locked up. So you gotta be smart, man. You don't go around um cussing these homos out, man, and try to tell them what the Bible says. You get your ass locked up. No, you let the Lord deal when the Lord deals accordingly, man. Alright? Um the only the only way you could get some type of mercy is if you is if you repent from this particular action, man. Okay? And pray the most I have mercy on your soul, so to speak. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 22. It says, How long wilt thou go about, O backsliding daughter? For the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yashai, has created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall come past a man. You know, and now, you know, the, I'm going to go into certain scriptures that look, man, men were supposed to gird up their loins and lead the family and lead the way. But now, they're not leading, all right? They're actually behind. You see a lot of niggas pushing strollers, all right? You got fake breasts where niggas is breastfeeding the babies, all right? World, things that would be a, no, a normal a woman task, you got these niggas doing it, man. All right? As a man, there's certain things you don't do, and as a woman, there's certain things you don't do, and that's established in the Bible, man. There's a, there's a, there's a straight-up uh, difference, man. All right? And that's a part of being masculine and feminine, man. There's certain attributes that are feminine that should be highly esteemed for women to do, man. When you read Proverbs, the 31st chapter, it tells you what a good woman should be doing. You know, cooking, sewing, these, these other things. Not breaking down scriptures and all that type of shit, man. All right? They got this new video game. Came out last year, Battlefield Five In World War II, they had a female on the cover. And we know historically there weren't a woman on the battlefields in World War II. So you see that there's a, pers there's a certain agenda being pushed here, man. All right, and they they'll they'll say, look, a woman is so equal to a man, but the moment a man puts hands on a woman, then he's going away for life, man. He's gonna he's gonna heavy severe time, but she could smack you upside the head. So where's the quality? There's no quality, man. All right, it's an agenda being pushed, and this video is being put together by the spirit because, as you can see, only the men that have the Bible are the few men left. Most of these niggas out here are fagged out. Let's just be straight, man. Okay, pants over their eyes, dyeing their hair. All right. Doing things that the Heavenly Father looked down upon. The Most High was dealing with men. Okay? And I'm going to get into some scriptures on that, man. But as you can see, um, in this particular society run by Esau, a woman is ahead in everything, man. Jobs, school, all this type of shit. Custody battles. You know? It's almost, like, really fearful if you have a kid with a woman in this society, because you get a kid with a, with a with a woman in the society, she got you by the balls, man. It wasn't so according to the scriptures. You know, when you had a bill of divorce, she went her way, and she could only keep what was upon her. That's how come in the ancient world, they kept all their jewelries on them and everything, because at any moment, the man could say, look, you know, and she had to go what was on what was on her. That's how come when Yahweh Shah stepped on the scene, Yahweh Shah said, look, man, you brothers are going off. You guys are kicking, put a woman to the side because they ain't cooking your meal right, man. Now, only unless you commit adultery, you put it to the side. All right? So you got to understand, there was ancient customs, all right, which are proper customs that are, that are upheld in the Bible, man. But we live in a Western society. We over here on the West Coast. And a lot of these Israelites out here, a lot of these black men, Latino men, Native American, they have a Western mindset, which primarily is a very feminine mindset, man. This is the book of Job, Job uh, 38 and 3. It says, gird up now thy loins like a man. See that? Because women can't gird up their loins because women didn't wear girdles, all right? The scriptures tell you that a man should wear what pertains to a man and a woman should wear what, pertain to what pertains to a woman. Men wore girdles, all right? All right, and when they were ready, they wrapped their thing through, uh, wrapped the, like the, the, the garment, it was long, so they'll have to wrap it 
and put it through the girdle. All right, you know a woman couldn't do this because they wouldn't be able to. You, in the ancient world, you're not supposed to walk around with your legs and stuff exposed and doing super strenuous labors that only man could do. But in this society, everything is upside down, man. Completely upside down. Okay, what was what was once esteemed as covering yourself up is now looked of as frowned upon, and what was frowned upon in the ancient world, which is exposing yourself, this is what's being done today. Okay, everything is hypersexualized. All right, and we know as men, hey, we love looking at ass and titties and these types of things. But look, that woman could have a man. And now that what's that? That's adultery of the mind, man. Okay. So that's that's all for according to the Bible. But this is the way the society is being run. It's being run ungodly. This is why the Heavenly Father has to come back and set things right side up. Read the scripture again. Job 38 and 3. It says, Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee and answer thou me. All right, now I'll be honest, I didn't watch the Elder Manatazak show yet. All right, I was at work, I clicked it, but I didn't watch it. But just the title alone, I was like, that's the spirit, because that's what I wanted to get into, man. All right, the feminization of the of, of men as a whole, man. All right, because they, what they're doing now is like, um, when I was watching that video, that dude made a good point about the movies Incredibles 2. He was using a whole bunch of stuff, because it was, it was showing you how pop culture, how they put it in pop culture. You, If you know anything, you know TV... Is the number one hypnotizing agent out there, man. It's the number one thing used to manipulate the minds of the people. Now you have the movies The Incredibles 2, where uh, the elastic woman, the wife, she had to take the role of the main hero. And the dad, which was Mr. Incredible, had to fall back. So the roles switch. And you know what's crazy about it? They always make the men look incompetent because she was being a hero and she was being extremely good at it, better than him. And when he had to play the role of, of the, the parent figure, they made him look like a fucking idiot, man. They made him look like he don't know what he's doing. Made him look totally incompetent. And they've been pushing this thing for years. Homer Simpsons, Peter Griffin, all right? They got these father figures out there looking like complete morons, man. Which is not which is not the case in reality, man. All right? I, I, I for one, I know my father is a very competent man, all right? He is, he's a very hard worker. He's not a fucking idiot, man. But this is, what the, this is how they try to portray men nowadays as complete idiots. All right, and they don't know how to fucking tie their shoes. All right, and it's supposed to be funny. Michael Scott, they all, you know what I'm saying? The list goes on. If you look at predominantly male figures, they 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 being looked at today as um incompetent, and then they show the women as the ones that's the brains behind the operation. When when you read the ancient world, Lot was the heads of his wife. He was leading the way. That's how come when I asked look back and turned to a pillar of salt, Lot didn't even know because in the ancient time there was a certain distance kept. They didn't walk side by side and hand by hand, man. They didn't sit at the same level. They had their own tents for certain things, man. There was a separation. And as you can see, when you look, and if you look at the feminist movement, it's deprived of logic, man. There's no fucking way. Physically, a man and a woman are equal. They're completely different creatures. You know what proves that? Not even all men are equal. All right, I can't do what LeBron James do. All right, I can't do what Usain Bolt do. So if all men ain't even equal to all men, how the fuck a woman equal to all men? The WM the WNBA is not equal to the NBA, man. So we see in logic is being tossed out the window to appease certain people's emotions, man. And then you got men out there that supporting this thing, man. You got men out there that got no balls and shit. And I'll tell you what, man, you guys out there that bend over for these women, you don't at the end of the day, they're not gonna respect you. All right, ultimately, what they're going to do is they, they're either going to uh, use you for what they have, if you're a completely feminine, no-balls-having-ass man, all right, or just fuck on you, man. This is this is just the reality of things, man, all right, because they don't respect a pushover. Nobody respects a pushover, man, all right? And I dealt with all types of women, all right? And they like guys that are up front and sometimes a bit of an asshole. And that's just the reality of things, man, okay? Because that, cause that goes back that biblical ancient custom I'm going from there I'm going to go to um, 1 Corinthians chapter 16 verse 13 it says watch ye stand fast in the faith quit you like men be strong see that so when we see stuff that is attributed to men it's, it's being stuff that is attributed to being strong alright man up Taking responsibility for your own actions. You see the recent show I did for with Takashi Six Nine. 
He out there fucking snitching on everybody. That's one of the most unmanly thing you could do, man. Snitching, man. And you got these IUIC guys talking about go ahead and snitch. Look, man, you got a problem with anybody? Somebody selling drugs on your block, all that, whatever's going That has nothing to do with you. If you don't want that around you, pray to the Lord. You don't go to no goddamn cops, man. All right? And there's nothing um, about helping authorities. Being a snitch is what? Covering your own ass. That's all that's about, man. Throwing somebody else under the bus to cover your own ass. And in fact, amongst the Italians, all right, primarily in the Italian mob, they have a code called Amatra, all right, which means code of silence. And it goes back to the Spanish word for manliness, man, all right, because it's an unmanly thing to throw your burden and responsibilities and consequences of your actions upon another person, man, all right? But that's the society that we live in today. But there's a few men left, man. There's a few actual men, according to the Bible, left on this planet Earth. And the number is drastically dwindling, man. You know? And guess what? All you motherfuckers out there that left this thing and folded and let whatever in the world take you out, then you weren't a real man, period, man. Because you turned your back on the Lord. And that's one of the greatest things you could... That's one of the greatest sins and unmanly shit you could do. Is turn your back on the Heavenly Father. So those of you that went back in the world... All right, because I guess this thing was too hard for you. Fuck you, man. The Lord is going to come and deal with you in that day. Even you guys that were rowdy and speaking all rowdy and shit and acting like you was a... It don't matter. That was back then. If you're not doing it now, then the Lord, the Lord don't care about you. Now, that was the attributes of being manly. Now, let's see some of the attributes of being a woman. All right? It says, Jeremiah 31 and 22. It says, How long will thou go about, O backsliding daughter? For the Lord hath created... Oh, Slaki, I read that scripture. What I wanted to do was... uh, let me, let me read some more about girding up your loins. Because the primary thing you want to gird up is your mind. This is the book of First Peter chapter 1, verse 13. It says, Wherefore, gird up thy loins of your mind. As, it's, as they said in that movie Braveheart, it's our wits that make us men. All right, so men have to be logical. You have to think on your feet. You come in this thing, you got to kind of be, um, you got you to gotta be witty. You got to be sharp. You know how to deal with people. Learn how to rule your emotions, man. Logic goes back to the Greek logos, which means reason. So you have to reason actions, man, with facts, not your, not your emotions. Filter all your, your, your um, reason through scripture. You know, that's what it means by leaning upon the Lord. It says, wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of our Lord, Yahweh Shai. So at the end of the day, look, whatever is brought upon you, take it as a man, all right? And in the hopes that, look, you understand that the Most High puts you in whatever situation it is, good, evil, whatever it might be, you don't curse the Most High, all right? You do what you got to do. And you stay in this thing and you pray for deliverance for what particular situation, man. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verse 3. All right, pardon me. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verse 3. It says, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of the most size with men. All right. Now you got this woman out there teaching when the scriptures tell you that. That's not that's not that's not permissible in the Bible, man. All right, the scripture says if a woman learn anything, let her learn at home. Because truly, when you get into this Bible, man, you realize this thing was for men to teach women that they please, man. We at war. We at spiritual war. When you go in the book of Deuteronomy, was the twentieth chapter? The twentieth chapter is laws concerning war, and war was only a thing for men. All right, and if, if a woman is truly righteous, then this she won't get offended by this. Okay, if she calls herself truly following the Lord. And you men out there, if you really men this, because guess what? You got certain men out there that will get offended by this, man. Now, nah, we want the women and children involved. What, 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 was, what was there in the war? It wasn't there, man. It says, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of the most size of men, and I will dwell with them. And they shall be his people, and the Most High himself shall be with them and be their power. Okay? So, what, you can see why they try to suppress this knowledge, man. Alright? Because I'm, I'm going to come out straight, man. I was doing some effeminate shit 
back in the world because I was sagging my pants, all right? I had uh, the skinny jeans and all that type of shit, all right? But I didn't know. I was just going based on what I seen around me. But when I came in this thing and I saw understanding these scriptures, I said, wait a minute. No, nah, this is some fag shit. All right, I got to cut that out. Nobody had to tell me. My spirit was just like, nah. You know, the more you got into the scriptures, like, nah, man. The Lord don't be with, with this type of look, man. So you do have to look and carry yourself a certain way when you come in this thing, man. Because you're an ambassador. You're, in a, you're a representation of the Lord, man. So you want to walk how Yahweh Shai would walk if he was on this earth. And Yahweh Shai was the most masculine man to ever walk the earth. All right? This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 13, verse 12. I will make a man more precious than fine gold. And that's not talking about any man. All right? When you read, read, read the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 3, verse 1, it tells you the word of the Lord was precious in those days. Because Samuel had the, this knowledge. So that's what's going to make us precious. When all hell breaks loose, Isaiah 33 and 6, 16 gets kicked involved. Then the ones that have stability, all right, they're going to be precious. The ones that have this truth. All right, and as a whole, I'll say this much. When all hell breaks loose and chaos breaks loose, men, women are going to be looking for men, man. Because if all hell was to break loose right now, that's what would happen. Because they need some form of protection, man. Even a man than the golden wedge of, well, wedge of all fear. All right, so men are going to be precious, but even more precious than regular men is going to be men of this knowledge. Because they're going to be protected by your heart, by Shimei Shai, and they're going to have a sustained mind, man. And that's how come, that's what we're doing now. Really, we're just fortifying our mind to what's to come, the things that we're speaking about. Race riots, famine, all right? Martial law, all hell breaking loose. Things that we read about in the book of at Second Ezra, the 15th chapter. This is a reality, man. And if you're a bitch-made nigga, you're not going to survive it, period. I'm not going to sugarcoat it because the Bible don't sugarcoat it. Isaiah chapter 4 verse 1 and in, and in that day same day we, I just mentioned seven women seven, seven D, seven hundred whatever seven just represents completion seven women shall take hold of one man saying we will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach so in that day ain't gonna be no feminine um, I'm a bad bitch and nigga what you gonna do for me and none of that all that shit's gonna get tossed out the window nobody's gonna be caring about that Women are going to be like a commodity again, man. Feminine niggas are going to be tossed out the window because they're going to be useless. All right? And this is going to be really a separation tool. The hell... Like, you look at the prison system, man. All right? Not everybody can survive that. First thing you do when people get locked up and go to these maximum um, facilities is they try to look for protection. All right? And that's with um, cops and stuff around. How much more so when people are not going to be recording cops, man? People are going to try to find any type of uh, haven they can. And especially if a woman is attractive, she's going to be like, damn, I'm a target. Right? Using the prison system again. One of the biggest fear of getting locked up is getting fucking gang raped by a bunch of men. So how much more is somebody that's extremely attractive when all hell breaks loose and she's a female? She's going to have a target on her back. So she's going to be looking for protection. These are some of the things that's going to come to pass out here, man. I want to read just one scripture, and I'll quote the two rest. The scripture I'm going to read is the book of Nahum, chapter 3, verse 13. Two others that I'm quoting is going to be Jeremiah 48 and 41 and Jeremiah 51 and 30, because it's the same point. The point I want to use is, in the ancient world, shit used to kick. Boars... You, you know, stuff getting besieged, and there were certain things that characterized with how a man would behave, and a certain thing that was characterized with how a woman would behave, to back up the point that I was just making. Now, this is the book of Nahum, chapter 3, verse 13. It says, Behold, thy people in the midst of thee are women. The gates of thy land shall be set wide open unto thine enemies. The fire shall devour thy bars. So, let me just read Jeremiah 48 and 41 before I break down the point. It says, Karoth is taken, and the strongholds are su su surprised, and the mighty men's heart in Moab all that day shall be as the hearts of a woman in her pangs. So we see in that mighty men, when they're in a moment of distress, when they're in a moment of fleeing, they liken onto women in these particular situations, because back in the ancient world, they, there was no feminist 
I'm gonna stand and beat up a couple guys. That shit, people will have more common sense back then, I guess. Apparently, because now people think that's possible. Because all the movies, you got movies like Atomic Blonde, Charlie Theron, she weighs about a buck fifty, kicking two hundred and forty-five pound women men through the door, and it, you know, people will see this on TV and, and think this is a possible thing. But in reality, that shit ain't gonna happen. So we seen that there was a certain characteristics of what would happen when all hell would break loose, man. Women will try to find re refuge. And that is the time that's going to be a coming back when in the, you know, when these prophecies are being fulfilled, man. All right, men are going to truly start acting like men. The feminine, a feminine man is going to get put out the fucking window, all right? And this whole pride of feminism bullshit is going to be also out the window. And true order is going to be established, man. All right, so that's just building... Upon the same vibration that the uh, Elder Menachem Zach was going into. Again, I didn't get to watch the show, but the spirit was having me watching something similar. And I wanted to speak on it. So with that, hey, look, I'm going to give my praises to Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Rekha I'm going to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone True Well. And I'm going to say salutations to you brothers out there, man. Stay strong in this faith. Have a long